What's up guys? Do you love amazing views like this? But also love your Netflix, you know, going on the internet, working, all the etc. I'm Jesse with Adventure Endeavor and we're going to show you how we get RV internet while on the road, full timing, full time. The first thing you need to figure out is what your needs are for internet. Um, how much you're going to be working potentially, watching TV, Netflixing, um, video chatting with your friends or family or possibly coworkers. Uh, that's how you're going to be able to start your figuring out what your needs are for RV internet. Your first thought might be RV park or campground Wi-Fi, and we will be the first to tell you that it is not always reliable. Um, we actually had an experience in Acadia National Park where the day before we rolled in we were planning to rely on their Wi-Fi and they had a big storm that basically wiped out their internet for a week and they didn't know when it was going to get back up. So definitely don't ever want to rely fully on RV Park Wi-Fi. It is a backup option sometimes but you're going to want to carry your own arsenal of internet equipment. Alright, so another option for camping for a lot of people is state parks. We've stayed at a few of them and sometimes they have Wi-Fi, sometimes they don't. One experience I can remember is we were at Karchner Caverns in Arizona and they did have Wi-Fi, barely. Luckily it was over the weekend so Melissa didn't have to work, but I relied on it to upload a video and it took about four hours to upload a seven or eight minute video. So. That's always not going to be super stable as well. If you're like us and you love boondocking, you're going to want to have most likely all three carriers as an option. And by that, I mean all three cell carriers. So T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T. Uh, T-Mobile and Sprint actually just merged, so they are now one company. And we recommend setting up your internet arsenal with as many options as possible. One carrier might work for you, but it's not gonna work in every single location. The strength of your signal is gonna vary based on your location 100% of the time, I can guarantee you that. So if you, especially if you have to work, don't rely just on one carrier. It's best to use various apps to figure out what kind of signal you might have at a, at a location and scout ahead if possible. If your new location is five hours away from where you last stayed, that's not gonna be an option, but you can check apps like uh, speedtest.com, OpenSignal, and... Don't forget Compendium. Oh, <laughs> Compendium is a great one uh, to check signal in different locations. Uh, down at the very bottom of the page, they have a section that tells you the average signal strength for each location, um, and that's measured in actual bars. Uh, like a typical cell phone carrier, but you never want to rely on that alone. Whenever you get to a new location, you always want to run a speed test and see what your download and upload speeds are in megabits per second. And the higher the speed test results, the better your signal is going to be. All right, so your most basic option will just be your hotspot on your cell phone. For many people, that is plenty. For us, it's not quite enough. We have used it quite often. Um, Melissa had for a long time an iPhone and we just used a hotspot and if you are going to use a hotspot and you need better internet make sure you plug it in and click tethering that will get you better speeds than you can get just by using the hotspot itself. A big downside of using a cell phone as a hotspot is that that's your dedicated data device but it's also your phone and if you're on a call at the same time as you're using it for internet it could slow your speeds down. Plus, if you need to leave the, the RV for some reason, you're gonna be taking your cell phone with you, most likely, and that's your only option. You might be out of luck. So the next step above uh, just a cell phone hotspot would be something like a WineGuard or Togo roof-mounted dedicated data device. Um, this works a little bit better for us than just the cell phone hotspots. Um, it's 
higher up in the rig and it actually provides internet for the entire RV plus outside of it to a certain range. Um, we've had good success with it so far and it's nice to have a little bit of different options. A lot of the internet units may come with either 12 volt or 110 to power them so you might need solar and or a generator to run them depending on which one you choose or be hooked up at an RV park. <laughs> so the next upgrade for internet that we went with was this handy dandy little guy right here. This is a pretty powerful dedicated router. As you can see, it has these fancy antennas on it and it actually takes a SIM card um, from Verizon is what I chose um, for this device only. And it actually has ports on the back, ethernet ports that you can plug it directly into a computer. I'm pretty sure it runs on 12 volt or 110, um, depending on the plug that you get. And I think you can select the option based on your needs on Amazon or somewhere else. So we will link this router um, below so you can pick it up on Amazon if you're interested in it and like we like always um, you know this will help us out so we just want to let you guys know that beforehand. So far it's been great for us. We have it wired up um, to 110 and it runs off our inverter so it's really simple. I'm super pumped on this thing. It's been awesome. It takes a dedicated SIM card. We chose Verizon and it's been working great so far. I opted for the SIM 7 version. This is the Mophie 4500 4GX LTE version 2. The SIM 7 version versus the SIM 4 actually offers an additional band 71 for T-Mobile and there might be a couple others as well. Honestly, can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, the point is that they're constantly coming out with additional technology and it's constantly changing the internet plans are constantly changing so you basically want to just do as much research as you possibly can and get the latest technology all right guys we just want to reiterate there isn't any one best solution for internet you've got to figure out what works best for you based on your individual needs our style is simple but redundant we have multiple options uh, we got to figure out what works best for us in our current location every time we move and we are definitely by no means experts. No, so <laughs> not at all, not at all, far from it actually. I actually learned pretty much everything I know from rvmobileinternet.com, check them out right here. And they actually wrote the book literally on RV internet. So they know pretty much everything. They stay on top of all of the newest technology and they push that information out to their subscribers constantly. So check them out and uh, you will definitely learn something new. Yeah, so hopefully this video helped you guys out. Like she said, we have a very redundant system. We have three carriers. We have cell phone hotspots, we have the Togo device, and then we have the Mophie 4500, which everything will be linked below. And like always, if this video helped us out, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Melissa, every time, leave Sorry. me hanging. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Tap and flip? Tap, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What's with the tap and the flip? I don't know. I just, you know, I just went for it. You're getting crazy. I just went for it. So crazy. Yeah, we're good. Later. <laughs>